So if I bring him up to here, he just has potential energy and he's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy. And as I let him go, he swings backwards and forwards between the same places, more or less. So big E is the symbol that gets used for energy. Uh, and it sort of crops up all over the place in physics, uh, probably in the most famous equation of them all, E equals mc squared. The E in that is the energy of something. It's just something which is always conserved. So it's either nuclear energy, energy associated with mass, E equals mc squared. It's energy associated with thermal motion, or it can be in an electromagnetic field. It can have many different forces, uh, forms. But if you add all these things together at each stage and keep the bookkeeping, it is that quantity which is always conserved. But I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's one of those deep mysteries. So if one of your kids said, Dad, what is energy? How would you answer that? That's a tough question. What is energy? Have you got a dictionary, George? No. I've got one upstairs. We'll look it up another day. All okay. Right. You see, it's how much oomph something's got, but that's not really a very scientific definition, is it, really? No, but it's good. <laughs> energy comes in many different forms, and the normal ones we talk about are energy due to motion, which is called kinetic energy, and energy due to position, which is called potential energy. Although there are all these different kinds of energy, you can, there's kind of an exchange rate between them, so you can actually interchange, you can, you can change your potential energy into kinetic energy by dropping something, for example. So they are all really the same thing, um, but it's just stored in different forms. So you can have the chemical energy stored in a battery, for example, which you can then turn into kinetic energy when you plug that battery into a motor. And so I touch here, this is just a battery, there's a magnet down here, and as I touch it, it spins round like mad. And as I leave it, you'll see it's not a perpetual motion machine unless I leave the electrical contact. It slows down, it slows down and comes to a stop. So if you're a child on a swing, and you move backwards, that's energy due to position. But if you let it go and it moves, that's energy due to motion. So I'd like you to imagine, now this was given to me by my son for Christmas. It's very strange when you're a physicist what you get given for presents at Christmas. But this is my Albert Einstein doll, complete with a bit of chalk. What did you think when you were given that? Oh, I, I had to say how wonderful it is, and he's going to be watching this. It was wonderful, Peter. Anyway, imagine Einstein is a pole vaulter, and he's charging along with this meter rule, pretending to be pole vaulting. And he comes all the way along to the little place where he puts it in the hole, and this gets bent and bent and bent. And now you, all the energy, his kinetic energy of motion has been turned into bending energy of this rod. And then he comes up as this unfurls, and he now just has potential energy due to his position. But being Einstein, he was the wrong way around. He should go over feet first, and there will be a rod and he fall down. So that's one example where you're converting kinetic energy of him sprinting as fast as he can to get as much kinetic energy into potential energy of this bending of the pole into potential energy due to his position. And if he's very clever, he can distort himself into a, such a shape that he gets his feet over first and then his legs and his arms go up in the air and he can manage to get over even though his centre of gravity is below the bar. Another example for poor little Mr Einstein, I'm going to put him on a swing. Because when I was a child, I never knew how to do the swing properly and my mother always had to push me. And so I'm going to fix him up so his fingers and toes are all wrapped around this properly and we'll let him swing. So if I bring him up to here, he just has potential energy and he's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy. And as I let him go, he swings backwards and forwards between the same places, more or less. But if you notice carefully, it's slowing down. It's slowing down. It's not coming back as far as it did before. The result of the movement of Einstein through the air, and there's some friction and dissipation of energy. Here, it's all potential energy and there's nothing else. Here it's partly kinetic because he's moving and he's reduced his, his uh, potential energy. The sum of the two is constant. When he gets down to the bottom it's all kinetic energy and there's no potential energy and the sum is constant apart from this little loss of energy due to friction and then it goes up and there might be some rocking motion that he does but if you take account of all sources of energy, all sources of energy, 
then the total is fixed. This is the law of conservation of energy. It means that if you do the accounting properly and you add up all the terms mathematically, all the terms, and then put it as a total, as the time varies, this remains constant. And it seems to be one of the most fundamental laws of nature. Energy is conserved. There's an old unit of energy called an erg, which is actually 10 to the minus 7 of a joule. That's a, a 10 millionth of a joule. And for some reason, astronomers insist on holding on to it. It's a unit which the rest of the world threw away decades ago. But for some reason, many astronomers insist on continuing to measure their units in this. And an erg is a pathetically tiny, it's like the kinetic energy of a gnat or something. It's some pathetically small unit. So it's completely ridiculous for astronomy, but for some reason, just sort of lost in the mist of time now. It's a unit that astronomers insist on keeping on using. Can I now talk about how kids at school could get this thing to rock backwards and forwards. I could never do it. You can either stand up on here or you sit down on your stool and at one part of the cycle when it's coming back you tuck your legs under and when you get to the other part of the cycle where it's going forward you lean back. Ah! And as a result of leaning forward you lower your centre of mass. In other words, where you're heaviest, which is around here, you lower it down. And when you go the other way, you're lowering it down. So you're changing, effectively, the length of the pendulum twice in a cycle. And if you do this at the right point, if you do it just at the right point, you will increase your energy. And everybody will say, how are you getting the energy higher? And the reason is you're doing work over the cycle, and this is pumping energy. When, when Olympic gymnasts are holding onto the bar, and they go round and round in circle. And you can see they've got rosin on their fingers. And there's clearly friction. They bend themselves at one point in the cycle to raise their centre of gravity. And that way they pump energy into the system.